Hey folks, Fall RC here. Um, here to talk about electronic speed controls uh, today for my Axial SCX10 Rubicon. Um, I've only had this out running a couple of times and I'm about to change the ESC. I wanted to let you know why and give you a bit of ESC history. Um, so this is the original ESC, um, or what's left of it I'm afraid. Um, this is my Novak Timbuk2, uh, which is dead. Uh, I've killed this twice, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, <laughs> It was kind of a strange story. Um, this was all uh, sealed up. It should have a plastic box on there and a heat sink that's been removed. Um, it was all plastic dipped up and sealed up. And um, if you look back in the um, video playlist for this build uh, of the Rubicon, um, this was actually working underwater um, for one day. And uh, I found problems with the sensors on the brushless motor. I hadn't waterproofed them, so I uh, did a bunch of work on the motor. And second day ran this as well. So this has been underwater for about 20 minutes, and it worked absolutely fine. Uh, on the second day of testing, when I finished my successful test, uh, I powered the model on in the evening just to wind in the winch cable after it was drying out, and it was dead, completely dead. I thought, uh-oh. Uh, I looked at the ESC and there was a plastic cover covering the LED window here and there was some condensation in it. And I thought, okay, quickly turned all the power off, uh, disassembled the ESC, peeled off all the plastic dip, removed the heat sink, removed everything. And I put all the components in an airing cupboard just to dry out overnight. Reassembled it the next day, turned it on and the LEDs powered up and everything seemed fine. I thought, hooray! Um, and then suddenly smoke started to come out of one of the MOSFETs up here and basically it burnt out a MOSFET and I thought the ESC was dead. Um, I did talk to Novak about this and they said, well, you could send it back for repair. That would be really expensive for me. I'm in the UK. I did look online and actually found a component mount, uh, reseller uh, that sold the MOSFETs but they're surface mount MOSFETs under all this gunge I've put on um, and soldering them on is pretty much impossible. But the weird thing was, after removing the MOSFET here, there, there's three banks of MOSFETs. There's um, eight, a strip of four, a strip of four, for one phase of the three phases of this um, brushless motor controller, and um, another phase, another phase. Once I removed that MOSFET, it worked. The ESC worked again. So I thought, okay, uh, the phase is going to be a bit weak, but I'm not going to run this too hard. So I set about really, really carefully... Oh, that's my, that's my speed controller moaning at me. Sorry about that. Um, so I set about proofing this up again. I did a really thorough job on the plaster dipping, really nicely going up the wires and so on, and going underneath the heat sink right up to the MOSFETs. Proof that up, and uh, I was almost ready to reassemble it, but I noticed that the plaster dip, um, when a plaster dip dries, it kind of shrinks slightly, which when you're dipping it completely around something, it's great because it shrinks onto it and holds it. But when you're going around, if I just wipe this off, when you're going around MOSFETs like here, um, the plastic dip shrinks away from the MOSFETs and the water could get in on into um, the tiny contacts underneath. So what I thought I would do is, and this gunge here is, um, it's heat sink paste. Like you have, say if you've got a personal computer, you stick the heat sink on. I thought that's okay, I'm gonna put the heat sink back. I'll fill this up with heat sink paste and that'll seal it up. It was late one evening and I wasn't thinking. Um, heat sink paste, this white stuff or grey stuff, depending on what you've got, is conductive. So I powered this back on, boom, and it's blown itself up again. And it, it's totally dead. So that was ESC number one. Uh, I was in a bit of a fix. I wanted to get the model going quickly. So as a temporary measure, I installed one of these. This is a Castle Creations Sidewinder 3. Um, this is not really a crawler ESC um, or a slow running ESC by any means, but it, I had it for another buggy I, I haven't built yet. But it is a brushless controller, but it's not censored. Um, now this ESC says for two and four wheel drive vehicles weighing five pounds or less. Now this weighs nine and a half pounds. It's got loads of stuff on it and two batteries. This ESC, this Castle one, works absolutely great with it. Um, I've even had this doing a sled pull at a recent competition here in the UK and um, it was fine, it didn't burn out, I actually came second in the event, that was really cool. So this is a really capable cheap speed controller but it's not censored. Um, it works really well, it is noisy though and this is the reason I'm going to swap this out apart from the fact that it doesn't have great low control. Now excuse the noisy servo. Now if I just run this really slowly, if you listen. 
hear the beep beep beeping that's the ESC firing the phases when it's really slow now under load hear this hear how noisy it gets if you give it more throttle you don't get the noise but when you're going really slowly so you're trying to crawl around to get to a gate in a competition obviously under load it's uh, extremely noisy which is really annoying uh, someone called it chirpy and the other thing is because it's not censored um, the slow and I mean really slow crawling control is not great if you try to start it from neutral um, it will jerk very slightly which for normal trail running absolutely fine you know I, I, if you're just trailing I recommend this is not too bad controller but I'm starting to do some competitions where you're going through gates and technical um, driving and the slow control is just not good enough so this is going to go um, you could put all different sorts of speed controllers in here obviously I need a brushless one uh, brushless censored I was thinking about maybe going for another Novak or maybe a Tekin they're all quite expensive I was thinking about maybe another castle but then I found on uh, Hobby King uh, this is an X car brushless censored ESC um, I have no idea if this is any good, but I have seen some people on some forums recommending it um, on the RC Sparks forum. I know some people in the States have used this and said it's quite good. Also, I've seen um, 00 Why Not. I'll put a link in the description. He's done a waterproof, waterproofing video on that ESC already. Um, I got it basically because it's really, really cheap. Uh, this is one I've just started to take apart. It has a plastic case that goes under there. And a fan on top this can take up to 3s i'll put a link in the description to this um i think this was about 25 pounds at the time um uk money um which compared to the the novak i blew up which is about oh about 100 pounds <laughs> um this is super cheap so you know if this works out then great um i can kind of burn a few of these out in testing and not worry about the cost so i'm going to give this one a go and um, see what it's like so i'll cut into some running videos on this in a little bit i just wanted to talk really quickly about the waterproofing now to waterproof this um, i've seen some people they'll just you know splodge lots of plaster dip all around these circuits up to the heat sink put the plastic bottom on off you go that's kind of the approach i took with the uh, timbuk 2 the reason why that didn't work out was if I just take off this uh, this heat sink um, sheet here, this kind of heat sink foam, you see under here you've got these MOSFETs, these surface mount MOSFETs. Now, if you um, if you just sit up around the edge, any water that might capillary down these wires, if it gets onto this circuit board, it will get to them. The reason is that if you plastered it this, even if you plastered it the whole thing and then maybe exposed the MOSFETs so they can touch the heatsink, because plastered it shrinks, it will slightly come away from that circuit board and you will get capillary moisture getting into there. So basically, I'm not going to plaster dip ESCs. Plaster dip on servos and receivers, LED controllers and so on is fine. Um, these glitch busting capacitors, you could plaster dip the whole thing, that's fine because you can get all the way around it. ESCs because you need to contact on the heatsink not a good idea so I'm going into epoxy resin on this one uh, I've not epoxied an ESC before uh, I'm not going to go on about it because I don't know what I'm doing I'm just going to try it out I'll give you some links in the description to a couple of good videos I've seen um, about this and I'll just give you some highlights of when I've done it and then we'll see how it works out now before I put this back together and do some testing under load out and about, I just wanted to talk about uh, programming. Um, you can program this ESC, but you do have to buy a separate programming card uh, from HobbyKing.com. Um, it's a Hobby King product. Um, this is super cheap. It's not really a big deal, especially considering how cheap the ESC is. Um, so the first sort of programming you want to do is just to set up the speed controller for your rig. That's real simple. Um, it's got this strange power switch here that has another little button on it. Um, you basically hold that button down and with your transmitter already on, turn it on. And then there's a light. You can't see it, but it's down the side here. Once that's gone to solid, uh, you let go of the button and then you go full throttle. So do full throttle here and wait for a beep. 
There we go. Now I go full reverse. Two beeps, go back to neutral. Three beeps. That's it programmed. You switch it off. And then back on. Do it. Beep, beep, beep. And now we're ready to go. So that's the um, ESC calibrated for your throttle positions. You can see the annoying, uh, if I go forwards, I can't go into reverse straight away. I have to go back to neutral. Uh, anywho, right, that's uh, that bit of it done. To use the programming card, you literally unplug your receiver wire from the ESC, like so. And then you plug that into the programming card. So what this is showing you is um, menu item number one, set number three, and printed on here we've got what setting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten R. Ah, so number one is the voltage cutoff for the lipos. It's on value three, so it's three volts a cell. Uh, I'd rather cut off at three point two, so I can go to value four. Okay. Next one is drag brake. Number eight. And I want that to be number eight, which is as much as it can do, which is 30% drag brake. Dilly, dilly, dilly. Turn off the ESC, the modified settings will be saved. Right, so the Hobby King ESC is in place. Um, I've unplugged the fan at the moment, it just seems to run the fan loads. I'll turn it on in just a moment. Um, wiring up is no problem, fairly standard. I've used bullet connectors uh, to bring the power in rather than hard soldering. The uh, reason for that is that uh, I can just unplug these. You know, if I'm out on the trail and something breaks, uh, I can just unplug these once I've cut through the plastic dip and uh, pop another speed control in. Uh, I always try to carry a spare speed control from going somewhere. Uh, then we've got the main three phases of the motor wire and the harness, uh, the sensor wire somewhere there is just down there anywho so now we're going from um, brushless not censored with the castle to brushless censored with this hobby king this is the 45 amp one it's quite a low um, current rating but you know this is a well it's quite heavy it's not going to be going super fast and uh, that amount of current capacity should be fine so transmitter is already on let's turn on the speed control Right, so it's switched on now. I just wanted to show you uh, the, the major difference now. We've gone back to having uh, censored, so the ESC knows exactly where the rotor in the motor is. And uh, if I just go forwards as little as possible to get the truck moving. There we go. The only noise there is, uh, is the servo moaning away. So no ESC noise, and also now much more super slow controllability if I nudge that again really. there we go that's going to be a big help um, for me when I'm using this in a competition and I want to kind of creep around an obstacle and be nice and careful previously the castle uh, ESC and uh, you know this is not designed for crawling at all uh, it would not move not move and then there'd be a slight jerk and it wasn't quite as controllable so uh that's a good result so far.